Adele Nazarian, live from Washington, D.C., who is a media fellow from Gold Institute for International Strategy. Adele, I hope I got your second name right, and welcome to We On. Thank you so much. You did. <laughs> so there's so much that has been talked about and discussed in this uh, second State of the Union address. Uh, the president spoke about police reforms. He spoke about uh, assault weapons um, ban. He also spoke about LGBTQ rights. What stood out for you in this speech? I will say a lot of things stood out. A lot of um, fact checking will be taking place. I'm certain if it already hasn't some inaccuracies, some blaring inaccuracies, of course, and some accuracies. But I think what was very interesting was during uh, the version that I w watched on um, C-SPAN once the president brought up LGBTQ rights, they immediately panned to Senate Ted Cruz, a former presidential candidate, and he had a look of absolute outrage on his face, as did many, as did many of his Republican colleagues. Um, so I, I definitely sense, despite the fact that in the beginning of his speech, there was a very, very warm sense of uh, camaraderie amongst attempting to have bipartisanship with his uh, ode to the new House Speaker, Kevin McCarthy, Perhaps what we'll see is there were many concessions made behind closed doors, which will come to fruition once we see that the Republicans who are now in the majority of Congress, um, how they will be able to uh, navigate the entire uh, political system regarding the divisiveness that exists. What also stood out to me, however, was that there was a lot of heckling going on and booing when it mm -hmm. came to mention of uh, claims that Republicans were trying to cut Social Security and Medicare, which Speaker McCarthy clearly said was not going to occur. And uh, I, I just don't know that there's necessarily going to be a as much consensus and cross-partisan, sorry, uh, unification across party lines. So as do, you maybe think, what do you think, Adele, sorry, do you think uh, the House is still divided on this uh, matters and on these issues? Because like you mentioned there, those some booze when, um, you know, the president started talking about a debt. And he actually said, let me just quote him, nearly 25% of the entire national debt, a debt that took 200 years to accumulate, was added by that administration alone. And by that administration, he means the Trump administration. What do you think um, <laughs> is going to happen next now? Because there was this clarion call for unity in the House, but do you think that is going to happen anytime soon? Well, I think it's very interesting. You accurately noted a clarion call is what it was. Um, one of the things that was also blaring to me was the attempt to blame the January 6th insurrection, which was a bunch of radicals that stormed the Capitol, on the attack on Paul Pelosi. Um, and I think that was a bit far-fetched. Of course, many in the American audience hopefully will do their fact-checking and know that was completely isolated and nothing to do with that. But I do not see, as you said, unity going forward. I think there's way too much of a discrepancy between um, the ide ideology that exists between both parties still. And there has to first be truly a level setting and a coming to uh, you want to call it a coming to Jesus moment, a coming to God moment, whatever you want to call it, coming to Allah moment, mm -hmm. um, that people have to realize the truth and first come to facts with the truth before they can they can uh, proceed. And unfortunately, the truth has not always been the mechanism with which um, politicians like to operate. But hopefully and trustfully, the media can do its work and its true um, mission, which is to report the truth. And I, I hope to see more of that including fact-checking. Right. Um, I'd also like to point out quickly that um, Chuck Schumer is the Senate Majority Leader. <laughs> Finally, Which Adele, I know, I, know, I know you had to brought, bring, bring that up, but uh, it's okay, it's fine. Let's just move on from that. Uh, finally, I Absolutely. just want to ask, to ask you, much of Biden's to-do list will not get done in the Congress. Do you think, do you believe that? No, I think that, frankly, it's very difficult to achieve everything on a commander in chief's list. Any commander in chief, I'd say that will achieve historically maybe about 40 percent, 30 percent or 40 percent of what they've said they will accomplish is, is pretty 
um, massive. To, to also reference your previous point, um, that the the burden, a financial burden, was placed be on the U.S. because of the previous administration. Every new administration, subsequent administration, inherits the the burdens and, and the debts of the previous administration. So it's a constant cycle. So you can't place the blame on one president in particular. But we will see in the next administration, for example, a lot of the same decisions that were made under this current administration will be adopted as burdens for the for the incoming administration in 2024. And I don't necessarily think that it will be a lot of positives, to be frank with you, but positives and negatives alike. Um, I, I will, though, make a, a call to this. I will commend the attempts at bipartisanship by, by giving a shout out to President Bush for his incredible um, work in combating the AIDS uh, epidemic. And I truly do hope that a cure for cancer, at least most forms of cancer, are uh, achieved as President Biden uh, spoke about in tonight's second State of the Union speech. Live from Washington, D.C., we'll have to leave it there. I've been talking to Adele Nazarian, who is a media fellow from Gold Institute for International Strategy. Adele, thank you for talking to me on today. Thank you so much. We On is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.